Hello everybody and welcome back to another tutorial. Now today I'm going to be showing you how you can make Windows XP look and feel a lot more like Mac OS X. And this whole video idea comes uh, from this Flyakite OS X3 program that I recently rediscovered uh, a couple of months ago and I thought it would be pretty cool to make uh, a little video you know, basically showcasing this tool. If you've never heard of this, um, which I'm sure you know a lot of you have, as this was a, a pretty popular tool back in 2005 when this program came out. I think it might uh, have even been before 2005, but this is basically an all-in-one theme package that is you know basically designed to make your Windows XP uh, installation look uh, a lot more, like it really does uh, make your PC look like Mac OS X. And as I'm going to be showing you here, this is a you know pretty cool program. It's all automated, which is you know something pretty cool as well as normally you know if you wanted to patch or theme Windows XP, um, to make it look like OS 10, you would have to kind of find all these programs by yourself. Um, you would have to, you know, like patch the files, you, you know, manually or using some tools. This is pretty nice because it just kind of combines all that into one simple installer. And so we're just going to enter uh, this website here. As I'm going to show you, even the website for this tool uh, looks, you know, just like Mac OS 10, as you can see here. Now this. Pro program hasn't really been developed since 2006 so it is pretty old um, but I just thought this would be cool you know I just uh, kind of you know as I said I uh, kind of came across this program a couple months ago I thought it would be cool you know we might even try to install this on a real XP machine but for now we're just doing it in a, in a virtual machine um, you, you know just to see how it works but so you can see I do have to pull this website from the Wayback machine as the website um, actually went down I think in 2016 so which was kind of funny it was you know never developed since 2006 it was basically an abandoned project but you could still download it from the official site um, if you do want to download this today you have to go to this uh, major geeks page uh, this is basically a mirror of the file I'll have this down below if you want to you know basically check it out and you know install it for yourself um, but you know you can see here it uh, was posted uh, 8 4 2006 and this is this is the author right here Chris Kite so if you think the name sounds kind of weird fly kite OS X that's kind of where that it gets the name from uh, this author's last name kind of uh, a I guess sort of play on words type thing um, so here we are uh, at, at the this is basically I mean is a Mac OS 10 login screen uh, but it is all uh, on this guy's website so I'm just gonna put in my name here we're gonna hit login and you'll see that if hit login again, maybe uh, it should load the Mac OS 10 desktop. I'm going to get out of this bar again up here. Um, so yeah, this is it. I mean, this is again from this guy's website. He put a lot of work even into his website to make it look like OS 10. And again, this is something that you know you're going to probably see like one or two times. And you're not going to think about it again. So he put a lot of effort into this. So you know, like the whole program, you know, just just from this, I thought at least back then that it was going to be pretty cool. So this is uh, like his little blog post thing here. You can see he hasn't posted since 2007. And if you wanted to, when this came out, uh, you would have to go up to downloads here and hit Fly Kite OS 10, and it would uh, bring up a like you know list of meters and stuff. It doesn't really work anymore. Um, so you know this site is, is just kind of here for I guess like or, like archival purposes, as it is on the web archive. So. You know that is pretty cool i mean even like this little dock down here looks pretty cool so you know that is neat uh, but let's actually get into i actually got to download the program all right so we've got the file downloading here it's almost done i did have to download it from soft tonic because the major geeks link is apparently down so we're going to run this right here and this is it as you can see uh, it does this like nice little fade in effect and then it brings up the installer and this installer gives you a lot of options. We're just going to uh, accept the license terms. And you know this is uh, basically uh, the change log where in here you would see all of the notes and everything in there. And you can see the last uh, you know update was February 25th, 2006. Uh, so this is where we can choose what we want to install. So you can choose to create a system restore point. Uh, it's got system file modifications. This is probably necessary as you do have to actually install the UX theme multi patcher in here. And it modifies, just look at all these files that it modifies. Uh, even for like an Office suite, it will also kind of try to retheme that as well. I don't have an Office suite installed on this computer, so we're not going to be able to take a look at that. But you know, we're going to take a look at how Windows XP. Um, 
you know, like, like how that it changes that. But we're just going to go through, and you can see we've got a lot of stuff here. It installs all these programs. It's got skins, extra software, and tweaks as well. We're just going to go with all this and hit on Next. And this is where that it gives you the options if you want to use uh, the 48 by 48 or the 128 by 128. We're just going to go with this. Um, and you, we're also going to, since we're on a widescreen monitor, we're going to use the widescreen boot screen. And you can also choose to add the OEM branding to system properties and show the administrator account on the welcome screen. It does all this right here for you. And when we click on install, the install process does take a little bit um, because it does have to actually manually go through and patch all those files. But the nice thing is, is you don't have to do anything because it does it all by itself. So you can see here, it will tell you exactly what it's doing here. And this is where it starts to patch uh, the UX theme DLL and the Shell32 DLL. And it goes through and modifies. It's actually mod all these CPL files are control panel, uh, like like the little sub menus in control panel. It modifies all of those. And something else that it does, which is pretty cool, is it will automatically move the taskbar to the top of the screen using some mouse scripts, which I'll just kind of uh, you know leave it recording. So. Um, like you know, I, I can show you how that works. It is pretty neat. The last time that I tried to do this uh, in a previous take of this video, it, it failed for whatever reason. So right here, once it finishes installing the program, this is when it should move the mouse. Yes, yeah, here, yeah, move to the taskbar. As you can see, it tries to do it. I think it's trying to grab over there by the clock, and it's not. Yeah, see, it failed to do it again for some reason. But that obviously wasn't me moving the mouse. You know, it was doing it all by itself and. So we're just gonna have to manually do it here. I don't know why, because I was I, I tried it like two times. It worked fine. The last time that I tried it in a previous take, it didn't work, and now it didn't work again. I don't know what's causing it. So we're just gonna move this up here. As obviously, you know, if you can't tell, um, this is going to be themed to look like the Apple menu, and they're going to put or it's going to put a dock uh, down here on, the, on you know on the bottom of the screen, which is how Mac OS X. Uh, you know, works basically. So we're going to hit on reboot now. Uh, the boot screen, I don't think will be changed on this first reboot. I think it takes another reboot, but uh, the boot screen is pretty cool. You know, it looks like a Mac OS 10 boot screen and it is widescreen. That's the other thing. Uh, so that's going to look cool as well. So this is the last time that we'll see this uh, classic XP login screen as on boot up. Uh, it's for whatever reason, at a very low resolution, um, but you can see it's uh, the classic XP boot screen. Uh, but you can see, you know, once it finishes up, it will go to a you know new. I guess I, I almost called it a lock screen, but a login screen. And because I enabled the administrator account, it will have us in, in here basically choose uh, what user that you want to log on with, and you have a shutdown option right here. It's all themed, even you know, like, the, like there's a whole shadow on this window. It's got the tiger background. So we're just going to log in with my user account. And you can see that, that the cursor changes. It's got the uh, Mac OS X beach ball. Uh, for whatever reason, it didn't change the wallpaper. It should have changed the wallpaper, but uh, we can manually do that. This is not like good for this video. It literally is supposed to change the wallpaper and supposed to move the, the uh, task part of the top of the screen, but it didn't do that. Um, but you know you, you can see here the taskbar has totally been reskinned. Uh, there is a new dock in here. This is actually RK Launcher. Um, I'm just going to go in uh, into properties and change this to. Is there an OS 10 theme? No, I guess we got to go in here and do um, desktop. I don't know why it didn't change that. It should have, but I think it's Aqua Blue. We'll just apply that. We want it to be stretched. There we go. So while we're in here, you can see that all these windows have been reskinned with the aqua buttons and the aqua menus and all that. Uh, so that looks pretty cool. It, it did not move these uh, like window controls to the left side like it is in OS X, but I think there's a program you can install that will do that for you uh, if you like you know, basically prefer uh, your you know windows to be that way. Um, so it's got all our options in, in, in here. And honestly, like this could really like, I mean, I, I don't know about somebody that's like a, you know, savvy computer user, but like someone who doesn't really know a lot about computers or basically, you know, like a novice, I think this could really fool somebody into thinking that you have OS X installed on your old XP machine. I just, you know, thought that was pretty cool. Uh, we can move these icons if you really want to make it look like OS X to the right side of the screen, as that's how it is in, in uh, Mac OS X. 
all the icons are populated over here. Um, obviously, there's no like like actual menu bar action going on up here. If you just click the Apple thing, it brings out the Windows Start menu. Although you know this is pretty rethemed as well, which looks pretty cool. All the icons, as you can see over here, have been uh, like actually reskinned and on the dock as well. Windows Explorer has the Finder icon. Um, IE has the Mac Internet Explorer icon. Outlook Express has the Mac Mail icon. iTunes, if it was installed, would be there but it just doesn't do anything. It just adds an iTunes shortcut along with QuickTime. QuickTime isn't installed either, so it doesn't do anything. Just kind of adds those there. Uh, Windows Media Player, uh, Microsoft Movie Maker, and uh, Control Panel has the System Preferences icon. And of course, uh, the Recycle Bin has the, the Trash icon. Something nice, as you can see there, it will actually tell you how many items are in the Recycle Bin and how much space it takes up right on a mouse over. So that's pretty nice. I don't think Windows does that by default. Uh, so that is that's pretty nice. We can go in here. We've got a, a song in there for some reason. I guess I didn't uh, empty this out. So we'll let's empty that out. While we're in Windows Explorer here, you can see that this has you know totally been reskinned as well. All the folder icons. If we go into I don't know what, where my computer is. There, there it is. Okay, we'll go to my computer. Um, all the folder icons. If I go into the, the local disk, uh, have been reskinned with uh, their or with a Mac theme so that looks pretty cool and if you may have noticed when I go into a folder it kind of does that icon pop out effect which is something that Mac OS 10 has as well so that's in there um, all, all, all the drive icons have also been changed so as you can see this hard drive icon has the Mac OS hard drive icon same with the DVD and the floppy drive as well uh, next thing we're going to go into control panel here is I do want to show you this as well um, if we go to the category view, it looks a little bit better, but all the icons in here have been changed. It's even got uh, this like nice little background thing, looks like system preferences. Um, and all these have you know been changed. Basically works and you know is the, the, the same control panel. But what's pretty cool is that there's this program it installs called Tiger System Preferences. I'm gonna you know bring that down here to the dock. And this is honestly what if you really you know wanted uh, you know, like your PC to you know, look like OS 10. This is uh, another cool program right here. Is when we launch this, you can see that it brings up a pretty much a one-to-one -one recreation of the uh, system preferences from OS 10. It even moves uh, the actual window controls to the left side. I think this is the only app that it installs that actually has it that way. But you can see it has all the same icons from Mac OS 10. All of these basically just point to their Windows counterparts. Like if I open up Appearance, it will open up the Appearance Properties window right here. And all of these basically do that. There's some like dashboard and expose uh, that you know just don't do anything uh, because like this isn't like actually properly set to you know, like to go to something. But it's got again all these options in here, and you've got this other thing that says Processor, and I think this opens up your Windows uh, like uh, system properties. Oh no, this actually opens up CPU Z. Apparently that's installed on here. Um, so I think this is, it's gonna, it thinks I have a Pentium M for some reason, and then it says a Core i7 7700K. Yeah, like that's the same thing, right? Uh, I don't know why it thinks I have a Pentium M, but okay. Uh, so let's see if it shows the main board. Okay, memory, it's got the memory right. I wonder if it shows, oh yeah, I only gave it two cores, it's not going to show the, the eight cores, but, um, so that's interesting, uh, that must be like something weird with that version of CPU-Z or something, but, um, so yeah, I mean, this is pretty cool, honestly, if I were to use this, I would probably leave this down, uh, you know, in, in place of this control panel icon, and just give this this icon, so it looks like system preferences. Uh, you might also notice that there are shadows on all the windows. That is through a program called, I think it's Y Shadow something. Uh, if, if we go in here, you can see that it's basically you know giving you uh, a nice um, like this folder with all the software and the tools that it installed. But yeah, this Y Shadow thing, uh, if you kill this process in Task Manager, all the shadows will go away. So this was this would probably be something like if you had like a you know beefier computer. Uh, you know, with like more RAM, your system could probably handle this, but if it didn't, then, you know, you were probably just going to want to turn that off. Um, but obviously, you know, on, on this VM here, it works perfectly fine. Um, 
And it, these are all of the tools that it uses. iColor folder is the tool used to change what the folders look like. Object Dock and RK Launcher are the two docs that installed. RK Launcher, in my opinion, looks better than Object Dock does. Um, you got Tire System Preferences. Uber Icon is um, the thing that it uses to modify the icons. You've got Win Roll, which I'm not sure what that does, and Y Shadow. Uh, there is also, I think if you press Alt Tab, yeah, it has changed the Alt Tab switcher as well. Uh, to do something sort of like expose, but it's not really, I mean, because it just basically shows you like a snapshot uh, of the desktop. And when I change, it will basically get rid of all the other windows except for the one just to focus on it, like where its exact position is. So that is pretty cool. Honestly, there's a lot of stuff in here, but this video would just, you know, go on forever if I went through every little thing. So I mean, I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this, you know, pretty different type of tutorial video. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, definitely be sure to let me know down in the comments below. I thought, you know, this was pretty fun, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking a look at this old Windows XP theme. Uh, you know, let me know if you guys have, you know, like ever heard of this before. Uh, and if you have, uh, like, you know, ever used it. As uh, that would be you know, pretty cool to see as well. So, yeah, guys, that's just going to about wrap it up for today's video. Um, just want to thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.